Hello, saints and scholars. Welcome back to Theo Life with me, Patrick Stitt, where today we're going to discuss the argument of informational theory and biological irreducible complexity. That's ugh, that's not really a great title, is it? Yeah, informational theory and irreducible biological complexity. It's kind of a bit of a mouthful. Oh, let's see if ChatTBT can come up with a more catchy title. So I'm doing a lecture video on Christian apologetics, and we're doing a section on informational theory and biological irreducible complexity. Could you please think of a more catchy title than informational theory and biological irreducible complexity? Something a little catchier and easier to remember. How about decoding life? The puzzle of information and complexity. Yeah, I could see that working. How about we start again? Welcome back to Theo Life, where today we're going to be decoding life, the puzzle of information and complexity. Whether it be the gigantic blue whale or the tiniest cellular being, all of life requires immensely detailed, complicated, and interconnected parts in order to exist. Living material doesn't look like something that started simple and got complicated. It's something that started immensely complicated and continues to get even more complicated. You yourself are a wonder of organic engineering. Even though you don't feel it right now, you are made up of about 37.2 trillion cells and all of those cells have got a unique job to do without you even thinking about it these cells are moving and adjusting and growing and dying and replicating and functioning in a choreographed miracle to make you one simple human being and Every one of these 37.2 trillion cells is a wonderhouse, a powerhouse of phenomenal biological information producing the most incredible, intricate results all the time. And all of this information, all of these cells are intricately wound together so that they are not individual parts, but they've come together in one union to form an irreducibly complex system with purpose and complexity and design. And this level of complexity points to a great mind and designer. Let's break down our syllogism for this argument. Premise 1. Complex specified information like code or language requires pre-planning, purpose and design. Such requirements can only come from an intelligent source. Premise 2. Random natural processes do not display pre-planning, purpose and design. Premise 3. Organisms contain complex specified information essential for life. Therefore, leading us to the conclusion that organisms are likely the product of an intelligent designer rather than random natural processes. When it comes to understanding how life began on this planet, we have two options. One, that life comes about by an intelligent being, or that life comes about through natural processes. Now, a naturalist may suggest that life comes about through complicated processes like evolution. This would be the theory that life starts at a very basic cellular function, then life becomes continually more complicated and morphs into an evolutionary tree. And at the top of this tree, you have complicated life forms just like yourself. The major problem with this theory is that life, even at its most basic, basic cellular form is an incredibly intricate device. Let's take the genetic code within your body. If we were to stretch out the genetic code in your body into one line, that line would be about 37 billion kilometers long. That line would be big enough to get from Earth to Pluto about five times over. It's huge. And that genetic code has to line up perfectly at every single step of the way in order to produce you. Good lordy, I'm starting to worry there's more layers to you than a skunk and tomato sandwich. One useful way to understand this biological complexity, particularly DNA, is to compare it to a language. When you use specific symbols with the exact purpose of communicating an action, that's what we call a language. In every single language, we use sounds and symbols to communicate ideas. These ideas have purpose because we're communicating these ideas with intent. We want something to happen because of our words. 
In the exact same way, this incredible genetic code works as a language. It uses symbols to communicate ideas with the purpose of bringing about you. This is an important point because languages do not happen by accident. Languages do not develop through a natural process without an intelligent mind behind them. A famous metaphor which tries to highlight the absurdity of such a process happening naturally would be to imagine one million monkeys slamming on a keyboard. And the question would be is how long would it take these monkeys randomly slamming on a keyboard to produce the entire works of Shakespeare. The genetic code is even more complicated than the complete works of Shakespeare showing how ridiculous it would be to imagine that DNA code could happen randomly. Just like our watch on the beach, languages have complexity, functionality, and purpose. In the exact same way, your DNA code uses specific symbols in order to bring about a biological function with a specific purpose. For example, if your HERC2 gene inhibits your OCA2 expression, that will cause you to have blue eyes. Complexity, function, and purpose always require forethought. A plan had to be made before you even began the process. And since nature has no capacity for forethought, we must conclude that it was an intelligent mind that brought about organic life upon the universe. The next area of interest is called irreducible complexity. Some biological systems are irreducibly complex, meaning they need multiple parts in place simultaneously to function and could not have developed gradually. Let's imagine you were in a field and in that field, there were four car wheels. Generally, we think that was a pile of junk. Let's say the next day you came about and those car wheels had axles, still not a car. Let's say next time a cooling system was placed upon that, those axles. What you would have there would be nothing. It's entirely useless. Ho oh, ho ho, but the next day must be Christmas because you wake up and there's a muffler attached to your axles. Now all of a sudden you have nada. Still a big pile of junk. And even when you add your battery and your cooling system and your alternator, you still wouldn't have a car. You only have a car when all of these pieces have been brought together and function as one entire whole. Take away some of these systems and you have a useless pile of junk. When the motor vehicle was first created, all of these systems systems had to come together in order to create a functional car. They did not come about piece by piece. The first cars were far simpler than what we have today, but they are still very complicated. Even in the most simple cell, if we took out some of those pieces of the cell, we find the cell would die and be completely non-functional. A famous example of this was brought about by Dr. Michael Behe and when he looks at the bacterial flagellum. Within the bacterial flagellum, Behe noticed an entire rotary engine system. This rotary system whipped around the bacterial flagellum's tail, enabling it to move. Behe notes that if you take out one of these parts, the entire system becomes non-functional. Any system that requires multiple parts to come together all at once in order to function requires forethought and shows it did not come together piece by piece through a random process. If biological systems come together piece by piece randomly, then we would expect biological systems to be overly wore down with non-functional parts. Michael Behe coined the term irreducible complexity to note that biological systems systems are not just complicated, but they cannot be reduced down to be any simpler. If you take parts out of the cell to make it even simpler, you have a non-functional cell. Therefore, irreducible complexity shows us that even at its most basic form, life requires forethought for all the pieces to come together to be functional. Since forethought is only the product of intelligence, we would note that the universe could not have come about by random processes of nature. This shows us that an intelligent mind went into the creation of life within the universe, and this intelligent mind we so far have been calling God.